Hello and welcome to the Elf Medicine Safety video podcast. We've had a bit of a change of personnel for this podcast, so instead of being joined by Dr. Kevin Cleary today, I'm joined by Rufaro Madaraqua. So welcome Rufaro, thank you for agreeing to join us on the podcast. Um, and firstly, maybe it's a good idea to give people an idea of your background and your role in the organisation. Yeah, like, you know, I've been saying my name is Rufaro, I'm a clinical practice lead on preclaim ward, which is the female acute ward. But for the past three years, I've predominantly worked on Rosbank ward, which is the female PQ ward. And also, I've covered New Harbour, which is the male PQ ward. So I asked Rufaro to join us on this podcast because he had mentioned to me that he had some concerns about a particular drug uh, and specifically about the safety of using that drug on the ward. So Rufaro, could you tell us what that drug is? It's a drug called Akifos, which is an IM preparation. Uh, we use it as a quick acting antipsychotics, antipsychotic medication. Okay, and just, I guess to be very clear, at the start, we're talking about zuclopenthixyl acetate, that is clopixyl acuphase, not zuclopenthixyl decanoate, that's clopixyl depo. And it's really important to distinguish between those two things because in this trust there have been occasions where the two of them have been mixed up, so a patient's been given the acuphase instead of the depo. So zuclopenthixyl decanoate, the depo, it's given maybe once a week to once every four weeks, something like that. It's a long-acting antipsychotic drug used for the maintenance treatment of schizophrenia and other psychotic illnesses. But how does that differ then from the acuphase? It's clopidogrel first. We use it for almost it's similar to rapid tranquilization, but it lasts for a period of up to seven to two hours where you usually get peak sedation at 18 hours where you actually see you know, the effect of medication coming into play. So the acuphase is slightly longer acting than rapid tranquilization medication would be, but it's shorter acting than a depo, than a depo. would be. And, and what kind of clinical situations would you actually use acuphase? Uh, acuphase is mainly used where you've got someone who's Acutely disturbed or acutely unwell, and also at the same time, there's poor compliance with medication. So, we are using it to manage the risk of you know, escalation in that presentation. And I guess it's important to emphasize that it's kind of last line therapy yes. that we would use, and it's only really used if people would be requiring multiple IAM injections, multiple intramuscular doses of drugs. So to avoid that, we give them this drug, which is a bit longer acting than rapid tranquilization medication. Now, so you've talked a bit about how fast it is to work. So uh, the monthly guidelines that we quite often refer to say that it will start acting after about two hours, the acuphase might reach its peak after about uh, 12 to 18 hours, something like that, but can go on working for three days, as Rufaro was saying. So that's a really important point to emphasize because we have had cases where someone has been given an acuphase, then a few hours later, they've been given another sedating medication on top of that acuphase. And so the sedating effect of the acuphase would still be increasing over that time, and then they were given more sedating medication on top of that, so potentially causing dangerous over sedation. So it's important to bear in mind the other drugs that people have taken before you administer anything for rapid tranquilization. Now, I know you had some specific safety concerns that you wanted to address here. Would you be able to tell us what those are? I think the main concern is with sedation, you know, once somebody is able to sedate it, it, it reduces their ability to eat, it, it, it reduces their ability to drink. So you, you, go, you go through two periods where somebody is sleeping all day and they are not eating, they are not drinking, then dehydration sets in, then the clinical presentation of the patient changes. Great, thank you, Rafael. So, yeah, really important point. This drug can sedate someone for up to three days. So during that time, they might not be that interested in eating or drinking. So food and fluid intake can really suffer. So really important to monitor these patients 
really closely. Thank you very much for joining us, Rufaro. And if there's a particular medicine safety issue that you would like to discuss with me in this podcast, or you would like us just to talk about in general, then please do get in touch. Thank you for watching.